over. <laughs> But not. But it predated Dot had that iPad, right? And that's 20 years ago. They they came up with the iPad. Also, the GameCube in reboot predated yeah. the actual GameCube. <laughs> kid was going home, seeing the new games, and just seeing all the different references that would be like pop into it, from House of the Dead to uh, Terror Rock to then the Awesome Powers in the later episodes. I'm just wondering how much of, of uh, just le was left on the cutting room floor, just because there was so much, there must have been some that didn't make it through the screening process. Like just ideas for games that you could implement in the real episodes. I remember, you know, I, I was a little disappointed when they did it, that they couldn't use real games. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I was like, well, it would be a great time, but I think that there was too much legality involved in doing all that. Stuff. But the spoofing, you can get away with spoofing something as a satire, right? So they did a lot of satire. Remember, that that wasn't the last movie. Was awesome. Yeah, yeah, that was the last movie. Yeah, and um, uh, the creators of the show were all British. So I think they really uh, appreciated the, the kind of taking the piss out of the office you know, house. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to sit here. That was scary. scary. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I, I like to shoot. You can have me, like, I mean, I mean, I like to shoot. You have me, like, an iconic character. Like, whenever someone thinks of people, like, they think of Bob, they think of you. And how does it feel like trying to, uh, think of, like, uh, when you replace the mantle of someone else who is, you as an iconic character? Do you, uh, basically, and, and do you feel any anxiety or, uh, well, you know what? I mean, it, unless you're stepping into something like, you know, like a Wolverine, stuff like that. When we go in and work on something, we, we, you have no idea what the fate of the show is. You know, I've done 12,000 episodes of various things over the years, but, you know, a lot of which just kind of disappears into obscurity. So when you go and you're working on a show, you kind of always hope that, hey, it's going to be good. That was a little different, though, because, you, you know, like when we do research, it's like, this is going to be cool. Yeah, I hope so. And, yeah, and, so, but, you know, there, there, you, you have no idea that 20 years later you're going to be sitting here doing no idea. So you go in and like, this is a job, I'm going as a voice editor, and I'm going to do the best performance I can possibly do with this, and hope for the best. Um, first of all, I'd like to note that you look remarkably like a grown up and so make sure everyone Yeah. That. <laughs> <laughs> that was really weird. Um, to, so I, I originated the role of Bob, so I wasn't going into someone else's shoes. But I had the experience of doing um, the Johnny Quest show where I had to do a uh, classic character, which was Hodge. And originally he had been seven years old in the original show, and I did it when he was about 17. And I remember I actually took it um, kind of seriously in the sense that, um, this is getting pretty deep here actually, uh, there weren't a lot of people of uh, color uh, represented, especially of uh, South Asian or East Indian descent on television. And I didn't want to do a, an absolute accent for him to make him kind of buffoonish. So I wanted to make him more, give him more respect for that culture. I am not of Indian descent, but I wanted to do a more respectful voice for that. So I took it very seriously because those kids, those Indian kids, didn't see themselves on television too much, and I wanted to do it properly. Yeah. Yes. Um, no pun on Sarah. What is the most extreme fan experience you ever had for a fan that came up to you and just made you? This is too much, and you just have to wait for them. <laughs> <laughs> so, in other words, the daily occurrence of life. <laughs> well, I ended up attraction for that. The blog's gone wrong. Oh. Oh. And that was my own fault because, it, you know, cause people were, are, you know, the people go to the phrase, Can I go off you? I'm like, So I did opening servers are, If you ask permission, it's not gone. <laughs> yeah, we're Canadians, so we don't do that because we're way too polite, but down there those people are insane. <laughs> Love is an unexpected broadside hug, essentially. Oh, so I was sitting there and I was down to something and I was talking to people and all of a sudden, you know, there's like this <laughs> There are some non-diminutive persons <laughs> in the parts of the contiguous United States of America. <laughs> Wham! Nailed me from about three quarters behind, hit me high, whoop, wrapped around my neck, and then fell back. Oh. 
and you know, all you can do is say, that's right, and I'm sitting there, and like, oh, it's a fucking artist, man. <laughs> And I was out, like my legs were not moving, it was, it was, it was interesting. And then, okay, I have to tell you a quick story too. Because it's lovely, because it really, it's all about dissing the hygiene and personal habits of our American artists. <laughs> it's gotten better now. But there was a time, in, certainly in some of the deeper parts of the Deep South, where We'll say that dental hygiene is thought of as more as kind of a guideline uh, than a rule. I've met these beautiful, scintillating, wonderful, intelligent people, and, and then the mouth opens up, you're like, sweet baby Jesus. Life is great and that kind of stuff. So I was standing again, talking with a, this gal came running out of the crowd, and then, Oh, 
So, it's okay. We're all here today. It's all right. Uh, I did try to find it actually in Vegas, and it was cut down. I remember I went all the way across town. It was a circus circus, and it was shut down at the time. But somebody told me here, was it Sabrina? That uh, they went to Mexico, in Mexico, and they have the actual film of the ride. Really? Yeah. So I said, next year, you go get one of those you know, motion things here and hook it up and bring it to the convention that everyone would want to go on that. So she has the actual ride. Yeah. Yes. This one's for Scott. Happy Flash has a lot of back and forth. Yes. Have a few of your favorites? You know what? As I say, most of that stuff was completely improv. It was just off the cuff. It was just Gary and I basically, you know, enacting our usual relationship with being simply rivalries in kindergarten. <laughs> Um, you know, it, just, it, was just, it was all a blur. Oh, the drugs. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> you know, can we do this stuff? I mean, you know, we touched on this before earlier. So I remember the first anime convention I did. This was when the uh, yeah, kind of was really huge. You know, when people come up and say, you know, can you do a line of. I go, I, that, that was the job I did. It's, I mean, God knows it's busy enough in here without memorizing every single line of dialogue I've ever done. <laughs> I now have a bunch of quotes that I can say at conventions because kind people like you wrote me out a list. <laughs> so, you know, Michael had to learn the opening from Reboot. Actually, so, they know it, I don't know. Exactly. You just start it and just follow the line. But I mean, Gary and I had so much fun with it. I said this earlier, they just let us go crazy. It was just like, you know, you push the button, I'm not push the button. I was like, oh, it's mega. And we just goofed. I remember the song that whole, and bones, and bones. That got very strange and surreal at the end of the line. Why are we singing? And honestly, I think that was a reference to a very, 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 very early Warner Brothers script. You know, or trial with the thing or the strange. The great thing is that, like I said, we've known each other a long time. And uh, there were, at that time, 20 years ago, you know, there was a, a select, I would say 15, 20 people who were doing the majority of it, the yeah. animation voiceover in Vancouver, Gary Shaw. Well, so my first job ever was Barbie and the Rockers. I was 10 with him, he was in. And uh, he was in almost every show I did at the time. Oh, yeah, every yeah. show. But you guys were really good friends, and for you to yeah. improvise together, you yeah. know, doing doing Hack and Slash was, was fun. I mean, Gary is one of the finest people in the yeah. studio ever. Yeah. Um, you're so cool. <laughs> um, not so much a question. Um, just one thing. Uh, during the entire, uh, well, first couple of seasons of Reboot, you guys made me feel very uh, guilty about playing video games. <laughs> <laughs> Explain your own side to your parents about the homework. And <laughs> I'm sorry about the video game. <laughs> um, and, uh, you remind me. People, when I sign the books, people want me to write Stay Frosty. I remember <laughs> like, like you say, you do these lines, you never think about it again. They're like, remember when you said Stay Frosty? I'm like, now I do. <laughs> and, uh, they, they told me later that when they originally Bob, he's going to be kind of an action hero a la Michael Bean in Aliens. Right. They said that when I kind of started doing it, they're like, it's quite funny that this guy is kind of cheesy trying to be cool. <laughs> so they started writing to, to me doing this, and I think Dave Frosty was one of the lines that gave them that idea. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, just some sort of question. I mean, earlier you noted there that there's a lot of celebrities <laughs> as such getting into it in uh, voice acting stateside. How frustrating is it when you see roles either recast for a name, quote unquote, uh, as such? I mean, and how do you feel with that? <laughs> First off, say that celebrity is very loose. So. <laughs> it is. Okay. Which is, and somebody who was ever on a show ever once is a celebrity. Yeah. So, I mean, when it's a major a movie star for an animated movie, I understand that. They're spending hundreds of millions to produce They want to be named on the box. Yeah. Or yeah. video on demand or the, on the marquee. Um, but when it comes to, like, you know, smaller things, I think it's a shame that, that the average rank and file actor, if I can use that term, doesn't get to work as much anymore because some, you know, TV star thinks it'd be fun to do a show for their kids. 
Because it's a business as well. People are trying to make a living. Yeah. With the, 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 the big push. With the exception of Pixar, who I think always casts brilliantly. Because they cast the right person. You know, they find an actor that really is good at um, <clears throat> Not that I'm speaking from personal experience at all. But what we do is quite specific. It, it's not enough. I mean, you can take very talented actors, and they're just lost at sea in the studio. They don't know how to create characters the way that we do. It is not uncommon for some of the big box animation films that are done by companies other than Pixar to say, for example, hire an actor such as Michael or myself to create the character because they've been working with celebrity for six months going, oh God. <laughs> it's like it's all in the eyes, man. No, it's a freaking cartoon. You don't have any goddamn eyes. <laughs> you make the eyes. <laughs> so you will go in and in four hours do an entire movie, performance, blah, 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 get you, here's your pittance, thank you very much. And then they will sit them down and go, okay, what we want you to do is listen to this line 10 times and say it just like that. <laughs> Here's your $8 million. You know, another, the other side of it, which is they'll hire, say, Chris Rock, who's very famous for talking about how much money he made doing an hour's work. Um, and what they'll do in their contract, which is Chris Rock will be given whatever millions of dollars for four record sessions. He will do the majority of his work then. Then they'll get someone you've never heard of to do voice matching for him with the things that are he didn't get the first time around, right, the falling down or the food in the up. And um, that's another thing that I do, a lot of voice matching. I've probably been the voice of many of your favorite actors on camera when they can't get them for an ADR session. I do that as well. In the back there. Um, I've got a question. Can, book, can the two of you do pick one eight 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 off? Rushing. Who wants to do Piccolo Beats Bob? Yes. This is going to be funny as hell. <laughs> <laughs> Get your cameras out. This is going to be a comedy. Oh, 